We chatted with Dylan McArdle, Executive Director of the Weber Center for the Performing Arts. We discussed Dylan's early experiences with production, the purpose and origin of the Weber Center, misconceptions of running a facility, and what's next for the Weber Center. You can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Dylan McArdle. I was born in Anoka, Minnesota. I really fell into theater and production while I was in college. All throughout like elementary school, junior high school, high school, I was in choir and had an interest in music. And I originally went to school at the Turbo to be a music education major. And in my second or third year, the theater was looking for work-study students over the summer and I needed some money. All right, I'll hop in there and do some work for you. I got in there and started working for them and it was like it was like someone flipped a switch for me. Everything came more naturally, everything came easier. Whereas uh, you know, my music education studies and things like that, I was I was having to study, you know, two times as long as everyone else got into it. I, ha- I didn't have any background or a whole lot of background in it. I didn't know how to play piano or anything like that. So I started playing piano in school and I was able to keep up for two years. But in my third year, I started kind of everyone else was progressing faster than me. And so moving into the theater, doing that work over the summer, it was just like everything came so naturally and easily. And I was like, well, you know, I started talking to the, some of the theater department and They recruited me and got me into the next year. So my junior year, I changed my major and I ended up graduating with a degree in technical production and design. So that's kind of what led me on my, on my theater path. What led you to the position at the Weber Center? Just location or how did that Weber Center sort of relationship start? It it actually goes back to the year I graduated college. I had just come back from a summer a summer position in Williamsburg, Virginia at the Virginia uh, Shakespeare Festival. Came back and uh, I saw a local posting for a job with La Crosse Community Theater as their technical director and scenic designer. And so I was with La Crosse Community Theater uh, up until 2011. And then I took a year away, 2012 to 2017. I was the scenic designer and technical director still, opened up the Weber Center, helped design it, open it, move everything in, all of that, run it for about four years as the technical director. And then the organization did a little bit of uh, reorganizing and actually developed this executive director position. It was something that I thought would be really neat to kind of be able to step into, run the facility how I I wanted to see it run, and uh, just kind of step into that leadership role. I applied for it. Here I am now, uh, almost four years later. You were kind of there from the start. So what was the process of the center, the Weber Center coming to be? My very first year at La Crosse Community Theater back in 2006, I came on board and they were already discussing plans for a new facility. La Crosse Community Theater moved into their old facility in the mid-60s with the idea of it being a temporary facility. They did a little bit of refurbishment and upgrades to it with the thinking of, okay, we're going to find and build a new facility in 10 years. Well, 50 years later, that still hadn't happened. And so when I came in, in 2006, they were really like in the planning phases of the capital campaign, you know, trying to figure out if it's doing feasibility studies, figuring out locations, you know, all of the early planning phases. And then it really started to pick up probably four three or four years later, when feasibility studies and everything were, was over with, got an architect on board. They're, you know, halfway through the uh, capital campaign already, even before they announced. And so when the Weber Center was built, it was one of the larger capital campaigns in La Crosse for quite some time. With great success and community involvement, we were able to get it built and get it done. It was kind of a partnership between other organizations too, wasn't it? I mean, was it seen as a home for colleges and the other performing arts? The Turbo University came along probably three quarters of the way through the process and showed interest in the project and eventually came on board as a partner organization as part of the Weber Center. And so the Weber Center consists of three organizations. And this is, this is what people might not really know is that the Weber Center itself is its own business. 
and then it has two other businesses that operate within with, within it. So La Crosse Community Theater runs its business out of the Weber Center, and then the Tribble University, the theater department uses it as an education and performance site, and the university uses it for other you know meetings and uh, classes and things like that. So when people think of the Weber Center, they may think of just La Crosse Community Theater or the Tribble, but it's actually three organizations all running kind of simultaneously. The Weber Center for the Performing Arts is the actual building. It has its own goals. It has its own uh, processes. And then you have these other sort of similar complementary entities that are, are basically working out of it, but in collaboration with you guys. What is it like running a venue like this, you know, with the different partners and also just having that overlay between those different organizations? When they formed and thought of this, um, this whole kind of idea, it had never really been even done before, and it's still not really done a whole lot. But there have been organizations that have contacted me over the years and have said, you know, how's this going? You know, what it's like? Is it successful? Having a facility like this is, it's expensive to get off the ground. It's expensive to run. And so if you kind of spread that out over multiple organizations and using it and, um, you know, maintaining it and helping with the funds and everything like that, it really kind of lowers the burden and allows those organizations to come into a, you know, a state-of-the-art facility and to be able to operate, whereas, you know, they might not have been able to have had those resources before. And so the collaboration is great. Almost 10 years in now, we're still like tweaking it and fine-tuning it and really kind of nailing it down in terms of like how we operate and what are the best scenarios and things like that. It's a great relationship with all three entities and everyone's on board and everyone's, you know, enthusiastic about the arts and uh, and what the Weber Center can do for the community and you know all of that. It's a great venue and I'm sure the last 7 months have been tough for a lot of people. How has COVID affected the Weber Center? I mean it's a big nice location but I mean people have to congregate to use it. Our doors have been closed since March 16th, I believe is the date. We have had no public performances at all. No public audiences, nothing like that. Everything that we have been doing has been streamed with really strict protocols in place. I think the most people that have been in the building at one time since March 16th is about 20 people. And that was the university had a meeting over here. And then we we put them on the linky stage and spaced them all out. That's the most that has been going on in here. We've been partnering up with uh, with you guys on some of the streamed events. It's been tough. And it's been tough for the arts just in general all over the country and even the world. Our revenues are down by like 75, 80, 90 percent. You know, we ha- literally have had zero income coming in since March other than grants and donations that have come in. And so we still have this overhead of this building. We can't just turn everything off. We can't just turn the electricity off or else, you know, that's going to impact other other things. So we still have to keep it climate controlled. Things still break. We still have to pay for services here. It's been tough trying to work through that and get it all figured out. Other organizations and nonprofits, some of them have the ability to kind of scale way back because they don't have a facility or they don't have a building. They can really scale back and really kind of, you know, trim their expenses. Whereas as we, you know, we still have to take care of this uh, 40,000 square foot facility. It takes resources and time and energy. So um, that's really been the hardest thing is, A, we didn't really know when it was going to end. So we've been keeping the building in a situation where, within a week's time, we could get it back up and running quickly. We really didn't want to get it anywhere below that because something could change quickly or an organization could say, you know, hey, we want to come in and do this. We really kind of kept it in a state of almost semi-readiness, which it was a decision, but I think it was a wise decision because we were able to be uh, light on our feet and able to kind of punt and, and really kind of mobilize quickly if we needed to. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a, a tough time for everybody in every industry. So the Weber Center has been adapting in some capacity. You know, you have been streaming some shows. You have a couple events coming up. What's next for the Weber Center? Where do you see happening in the next couple months to a year? We're looking probably six months out right now with the idea of we're not quite sure what's going to be happening uh, from July of 2021 through the end of the year. So we're kind of focusing on the next six months and we all feel that in the, within the next six months, there's probably not going to be any audiences within the building still past that. We're unsure, but we're willing to relook at things and figure that out. 
So I think we're going to be kind of on some of the same path and trajectory that we've been doing, kind of some streamed events, no face-to-face -face interactions in terms of like audience within the building. So really the hardest part is, is the uncertainty. Like it takes months to plan a single show. You know, you have to get the rights, you have to line up all the, uh, all your labor, you have to figure out, you know, auditions. A typical rehearsal process for a show could be six to eight weeks. You're a, a couple months out. And so with all the uncertainties and everything like that, you could spend a lot of time and resources trying to set up a show for it to only get canceled again. And then you have your PR, your marketing dollars that were spent, all of that. It's easier to kind of pull back and just work a month at a time. And, and the streaming things that we've been doing are, uh, we're able to do that. We're able to get those up quickly and without, you know, a whole lot of overhead associated with them. So that's kind of uh, what we're looking at is just kind of a six month outlook. And then after that, we're really hoping, I've heard a lot of good things on the vaccine front. So we're really hoping maybe in the fall of 2021 that we could uh, start getting some shows uh, going again and people in the doors. So if people want to follow along, what's the best avenue for them? If they want to just keep up to date with what's up with the Weber Center? You know, we have a fairly active uh, social media account on Facebook and then also on Instagram. Both of those are great spots. You can go to our website. Our website has a lot of great information on it, webercenterarts.org. And then you can also go there and uh, click on our mailing list sign up. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you would like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Locals. Subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We thank you for it.